My grandfather, Sada Nanak Singh, was in Jallianwala Bagh a hundred years ago when the massacre happened. He served, he'd gone there with two of his friends. He was uh, knocked down in the stampede, left for dead, piled up amongst the corpses, walked away from there, and a few months later, he wrote a searing long form poem. You could call it a ballad, you could call it a dirge, a lament, uh, called Khuni Vesakhi. The Rowlet Act, which had triggered the Jallianwala Bagh protests, was still in force. Um, the book was promptly banned, and most copies were confiscated. For the next 60 years, uh, this book was first published in May 1920. And for the next 60 years, in our family, we just knew that Zadanak Singh, our Bauji, uh, as we called him, had written this poem, which nobody had seen. He had, meanwhile, gone on to become Punjabi's most famous writer. His, he was known and revered as Nanak Singh, the novelist, and he wrote about 55 uh, novels in his lifetime. He won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1962 um, and was a major figure in literature. Wonderful. But then there was this missing poem, Khuni Vesakhi, of which he made a reference in his autobiography in 1949, first published in 1949, but nothing beyond. To make matters even worse, he never spoke about it. And all we know about his experiences is really from the words of my grandmother, who lived to the ripe old age of 100 uh, and was a great raconteur of his life and times. Um, in 1980, my father, who's a publisher and who has published many of my grandfather's books, comes across this article in a magazine called Jagriti. Uh, it's a literary and cultural magazine. It's by some guy called Professor K.S. Gupta, who writes about Nanak Singh, not the novelist, but poet. And in that article, where he, in that essay that he writes about Nanak Singh, the poet, he says, everybody talks about Nanak Singh, the novelist, but guys, did you know that he was also a poet? And he wrote this amazing poem called Khuni Visakhi, and he quotes from that poem. My father, who happens to chance upon this article, immediately says, how does this man know about Khuni Visakhi? Because it's something that we've been looking for for decades. Mm -hmm. So he contacts the editor of Jagriti magazine and says, who's this Professor K.S. Gupta? And can I contact him? So he gets his address, phone number. So my father and my mother, who's also a lecturer in Punjabi, they go across to meet him. <coughs> And they come across this, again, strange story that Professor Gupta's grandfather used to be a bit of a bibliophile, would buy every book, every pamphlet that he could lay his hands on in that little town called Muktsar. And he left like large volumes of books. When he passed away, they just put them into gunny bags and left them there. Gupta's eventually moved from Uktsar to Amritsar, and this man inherits these gunny sacks of books and is rifling through those and comes across this pamphlet called Khuni Visakhi. And because he's a lecturer of Punjabi language, he immediately says, sees that this is something rare. I've never, I've been teaching Nanak Singh's books, but I've never seen <laughs> this. And so he proceeds to write that article in Jagriti magazine. Anyway, that's the who done it about rediscovery of this book. So it was republished by my father in 1980 after being lost for 60 years um, and with a foreword from Professor K.S. Gupta. Um, my parents, uh, you know, I translated two of my grandfather's novels previously. 
And they said, why don't you try Khuni Visakhi? And I looked at it and I said, no, I can't. It's poetry. I don't do no poetry. It's too hard. And then this conversation came up again last year in June um, when we were in, in, in Amritsar. And I said, okay, with the centenary coming up, there's a strong reason that here's something rare in our family. And can I take it upon myself to, to do it? And therein began a process of a bit of self-discovery uh, because this is this sad realization of how little we know about our own history, how much we take for granted, how complacent we are living in Amritsar, being born in Amritsar, stones throw from Jallianwala Bagh, how much we take for granted. My own schoolmates living in Amritsar, not being sure who is Dyer and who's O'Dwyer. Michael O'Dwyer and General, General uh, Dyer who actually ordered the firing. Michael O'Dwyer was the governor of, of, of Punjab based in, in Lahore. Um, so anyways, there was that journey of self-discovery. And then the translation itself uh, was a bit of a process because not having translated any poetry and not having any affinity for it. Uh, first was the intellectual process of, uh, should you go in verse? Should you try to match the rhyme, uh, the meter, or should you just go free verse? And so I was reading up about it, trying to educate myself, and I came across this beautiful, very intemperate line from Robert Frost that translating into free verse is a bit like playing tennis without a net. Um, so you can do it, but it's really cheating. And you know, if the poet originally had established certain constraints on himself, then you should try and respect those constraints. Um, and so the decision was taken to try and do it in, uh, in uh, verse without realizing that when you commit yourself to that, you lose 90% of the vocabulary available to you. Uh, and so you're really struggling for finding the right words to express the same thoughts that the poet originally had. But coming to the poem itself, um, it's both a piece of literature and contemporary history, because what Bauji does is not just narrate what happened on 13th April, but the run up in that very tumultuous fortnight <coughs> before Jallianwala Bagh massacre happened. The fact that Gandhiji on the 30th of March had given a call for Satyagraha for Hartal uh, or a strike on the 6th of April, uh, which was widely followed, including in the city of Amritsar. Uh, the fact that there was this anger building up. And then particularly to me, um, there are two or three things that come through uh, uh, in the poem itself. The first is that Nanak Singh Ji was 22 years old and yet 22. 22 at that time, right? And yet when you read even the first passage of the poem, which is an invocation to Guru Gobind Singh, saying, oh Guru, give me the strength to do this task that I'm embarked myself on. Um, it's like he's writing for posterity. He wants future generations to remember the sacrifices of these people. And there are multiple references to that, including one subsequently where he's kind of voicing the feelings of the martyr, saying, a year has gone by and you still haven't built a memorial for me, for us who died here. Uh, uh, there's very strong sentiment. The other, to me, remarkable sentiment that comes through is the spirit of unity between the Hindu, Muslim, and Sikh communities in Amritsar at that point of time. Partly because of Gandhiji's message, partly because Amritsar fortuitously was led by Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu, a Cambridge educated lawyer, and Dr. Satyapal, who was an Arya Samaji, but who uh, uh, worked very closely with Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu. And so, Four days before the massacre, on the 9th of April, is Ram Naomi. And Ram Naomi was traditionally celebrated by the Hindu community of Amritsar. And there's this amazing passage that I want to try and 
read a little bit from. Yes, please. Um, maybe instead of reading the Punjabi, I'll read the English translation so that it's more uh, accessible to everybody. Sare Sikh Hindu Ate Musulmana Ral Mil E Purab Manayasi Musulmana Ne Aj Itifaq Wala E Adut Adutti Sabut Vikhayasi Pame Purab Si Asal Vich Hinduanda E Par Momna Khub Sajayasi Os Din Di Ki Me Galdasa Ajab Sama Kartar Liayasi Dr. Kichlu Te Satya Pal Sahib Jinna Ajda Vakta Dikhayaji गले दोहां दे फुलां दे हार पाके सारे शहर नु दर्शन कराया जी हर एक हिंदू मुसलमान ताई दिलों जान दा माई दा जाया जी कदी एदा दा प्रेम ना किसे डिठा जगत जदों दा रब बनाया जी एता नवा ही प्रेम दा बीज एथे किसे अर्श तो आण के लाया जी दूरी सब दे दिलां तो दूर होई वीर वीर ताई नजरी आया जी पानी एक गिलास दे विच पीता खाना एक था सब ने खाया जी क्या बात है बात है क्या बात है बात है हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम्स दे गैदर टुगेदर टू रिजॉइस एट अ फेस्टिवल ओ माय फ्रेंड्स ब्रदरहुड कन्वेड बाय मुस्लिम्स दैट डे बियॉन्ड इनक्रेडिबल इट वाज माय फ्रेंड्स अ फेस्टिवल ऑफ हिंदूज दो इट वाज मुस्लिम्स मेड इट जस्ट देयर ओन माय फ्रेंड्स इट इज हार्ड टू डिस्क्राइब दिस फीलिंग ट्रू फीलिंग न्यू a miracle it truly seemed, my friends. Dr. Saifuddin Satyapal together tread on a path united, my friends. Fated with garlands, our stalwart duo sent out a message clear, my friends. Their friendship displayed a bond so strong. Hindu-Muslim were the same, my friends. Such harmony never seen before since God made this word, my friends. The seed of friendship between these faiths descended from heaven itself, my friends. Discord and difference just seemed to vanish. Each saw the other as brother, my friends. Shared the same glass to drink their water. Sat down for meals together, my friends. And. And, and, and you know, um, again, when you see the history of that time, so ninth, Saifuddin and Satyapal lead this Ram Naomi procession in Amritsar, mm. this remarkable faith of unity, uh, show of unity. Mm. And the Brits get spooked by it. That they, you know, the, 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 the deputy commissioner says that there was something sinister about this. There was a political purpose behind it. And so 10th morning, both Satyapal and Saifuddin are arrested and taken off to Dharamsala. Um, and so the, the word spreads through the city and people go to deliver a petition to the deputy commissioner to release them. And there's um, beyond the bridge, beyond the walled city is the bridge and the, uh, beyond the bridge is the civil lines area where the uh, British stay. And they take a stand that they will not be allowed to cross the bridge. So there's firing on the bridge and some 30 people uh, get killed. And, you know, again, when I said that this, it's a, it's a bit of history, not just, not just uh, poetry. There's this very powerful scene of that, of, of that firing and, you know, the way it happens. The news of our leader's arrest is heard, and a pall of despair descends, O oh friends, like bolt of lightning it strikes them deep, and thousands wail out in grief, my friends. No food, no water, no comfort for them, left home and hearth and work, O oh friends. This was the day of the Hartal. In the blink of an eye, the strike takes hold, spreads across the city, O oh my friends. Like wilted flowers, faces drawn and grim. Our youth looked painfully pale, O oh friends. Upset, they gathered in numbers large to argue and plead with the rulers, O oh friends. Through famous gates of their city walled, they headed for railway bridge, O oh friends. <coughs> Saw soldiers positioned across the bridge, guns cocked and ready to fire, O oh friends. Not a shred of mercy these tyrants showed. Bang, bang, the bullets kept firing of friends. 
had gone to seek some justice, but they died right then and there of friends. Some did survive that fatal day, turned back in horror, true of friends. Says Nanak Singh, you can't change fate. That's writ by God himself yeah. of friends. Yeah. I'll just read a last passage and I think uh, then, um, unless there's appetite for more. But um, the next day is the day of the funerals uh, after the people have been killed on the bridge. And this is, again, chronologically, we are talking about April 11. So April 10, this happens. April 9 is Ram Naomi, April 10 is the firing, and April 11 are, are the funerals. Akhar romvde pitde mude karnu, sare lok hoke pareshan yaro, murde chukke apne modyante, sare shahar de vich pohanchan yaro, rati hal bazar masit andar, sare murdyan tain tikan yaro, suba chukke taraf sultan windi, कब्रिस्तान ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਹੁੰਚਾਣ ਯਾਰੋ ਲੱਖਾਂ ਆਦਮੀ ਨਾਲ ਜਨਾਜ਼ਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਤੁਰੇ ਜਾਮ ਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਹੈਰਾਨ ਯਾਰੋ ਸਾਰੇ ਹਿੰਦੂਆਂ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਤੇ ਮੋਮਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਡਾਡਾ ਲੱਗਾ ਇਹ ਗਜ਼ਬ ਦਾ ਬਾਣ ਯਾਰੋ ਇੱਕੋ ਜਿਸਮ ਇੱਕੋ ਦਰਦ ਇੱਕੋ ਸਾਰੇ ਮਜ਼ਬ ਹੋਏ ਇੱਕੋ ਜਾਨ ਯਾਰੋ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਅਸਚਰਜ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਦੇਖੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੈਰਾਨ ਯਾਰੋ ਹਿੰਦੂ ਸਿੱਖ ਉਦੋਂ ਯਾ ਹੁਸੈਨ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ मुसलमान कहंदे राम या राम राम यारो आखिर जाए पहुंचे कब्रिस्तान अंदर सारे सिख हिंदू मुसलमान यारो एक जगह ते फूकिया हिंदुआ नु दूजी जगह मोमन दफनान यारो बाकी जख्मिया सहक दे सहक दे दुच नु पास डॉक्टर तुरंत पहुंचान यारो नानक सिंह अगा नु किवें होई सुनो अगली पी दास्तान यारो so i've tried to translate this is a particularly difficult passage to do they struggled drenched in anger and tears distraught they truly were my friends carried corpses on their shoulders bent limped back to their city sad my friends hall bazaar's mosque was the night's abode for dead bodies placed in rows my friends heaved up next morning and off again to sultan wind's graveyard large my friends funeral processions joined by thousands more walked angrily dazed and distraught my friends hindu sikh and muslim strode side by side hearts pierced by arrows sharp my friends the same grief and pain they shared each bound by sorrow same my friends then a sight most wondrous was seen it left us amazed and awed my friends ya hussain cried out the hindus and sikhs as muslims echoed ram ram my friends and thus they reached the graveyard together hindu muslim and also the sikh my friends funeral pyres flamed for hindus and sikhs with muslims buried alongside my friends others injured wounded and limping slow were taken to doctors from there my friends asks nanak singh what happened next stay on and listen with me my friends sinek.com